Brooks. My next guest tonight is a Grammy and Emmy award-winning comedian who I always enjoy talking to. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Mr. Patton Oswalt. <laughs> Lovely to see you again. Thank you. I feel like I kind of see you or hear from you because I follow you on Twitter and I and, oh. I and I catch the pearls of wisdom from you <laughs> every so often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You throw it out there. You Sometimes. lay it down out there. Sometimes. How you been? It's been too long. It's been almost two years or something since you've been on here, and I, we miss Pat and Oswald. Where you, what's wrong? What did we say? What did I do? I miss. <clears throat> I miss Pat and Oswald. Um, <laughs> I'm traveling. You're constantly. a busy guy. I'm, I'm constantly on the road, and I'm. I'm uh, I'm flying out almost every weekend doing stand up. So mm -hmm. uh, and so just I'm on I'm in. Is that stressful for you <laughs> all all the the traveling around because it can wear you down? It it gets a little weary. And then also I'm just I'm very paranoid about like you know the the coronavirus and everyone on the plane. Are everyone... you doing stand up in Wuhan province? No, I'm not. So... <laughs> no. I, don't have to worry I about am that much, booked yes. there for a handshaking festival, which I'm a little worried about. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um... Is this, can you explain this because I was told this has something to do with that anxiety <laughs> of yours. I'll show it to you first, just so you know the photo. Yeah. Oh, no, oh God! So I'm gonna. Do you want to explain this first, or should I show when it I, first? When I when I fly on planes, I'm every, ha, half the people are coughing and sneezing, so I put a little um, thing over my face that I yes that I wear. <laughs> I. Um, I <laughs> I, um, was, I, is it necessary to look like a character from Assassin's Creed? Uh, yeah, Why? it's, you know... <laughs> is it homage? What is this? <laughs> it's me being paranoid, and then, of course, the Internet set me right going, oh, that mask doesn't uh, block anything, and if, and, if, and if anything, it creates a moist environment that makes viruses... They, again, just completely made me <laughs> ten times more paranoid about everything that... Like, well, wait a second. <laughs> if I saw you on my plane, I would get paranoid. Well... <laughs> This would not calm the rest of <laughs> no, us down. No, exactly. This is like driving through the Lincoln Tunnel and looking over, and the guy next to you has got like a scuba gear on. <laughs> well, there are a lot of people with face masks, like surgical face masks. I'm trying to be a little stylish and post-apocalyptic with it, you know, like maybe like be part of the Flash's nothing, Rogues Gallery. It calms people down like a little post-apocalyptic. <laughs> yeah, you know, a little. So, do you still get recognized as this guy? Uh, well, weirdly enough. On my flight last weekend, um, and it was a morning flight, we get in, everyone just immediately goes to sleep. But I guess I got up to use the restroom a couple times with my mask on, with my hood, and I, I guess I was just kind of scuttling through the plane. Yes. Just like going, and then I get my phone pings, I get a DM on Twitter. Is that what this is? Yes. From, of all people, Jack Ryan, John Krasinski was <laughs> sitting across from me, and he DMs to me, oh, he goes, uh, bizarre question. Are you dressed as a ninja on a flight to L.A.? <laughs> if... <laughs> if so, I may be sitting next to you, so... Wait a second. <laughs> How little eye contact do you make in public? I, I, because Krasinski's like six foot three or something, and he's John Krasinski. He's he's John Krasinski. He's taller sitting down than I am standing up. He's huge. He's a big, very big guy. And yeah. he was sitting there like watching a movie. And I love how if you if you look at the tone of the message, yes, he's being friendly and funny, but there is some fear in that. Like, are you? I mean, there's a I there's need a, to know that this is you. Yeah, there's a patent shaped ninja for some reason. <laughs> So I've either I either had some really bad scrambled eggs and I'm hallucinating, or yes. where something's about to happen. So yeah. Now I saw something <laughs> online the other day which I I just love. Mm. Uh, you have a daughter, Alice. Yes. How old is now, she? How old she's now she? ten years. She's, old. Well, she she'll still do what I like about. It. I saw this video. She'll still do things with you. Yes, she will. That she, does she, end at a certain point. Fair it, warning. It does, I know like, she's yes. on the very edge of the eye rolling stage, but she still likes to go do things. So, so good. We, we have a clip here that you brought, and uh, oh, yeah. you want to set up what's what's happening here? Yeah. Um, I, I tweeted this out <clears throat> a couple weeks ago. We we have been. I've been reading her the Harry Potter book since I believe she was five or six. Sure, sure. We go through, and and we and the other night I was we were reading number seven, the Deathly Hallows, and we were getting near the end, and my wife uh, Meredith came in and just 
randomly started like filming us because we're sitting there reading. And then she filmed the moment when I finished all the Harry Potter books with Alice. Like she Jim. filmed the end of the journey. So Jim. this is it. Did you guys just finish the book? Yeah. You just finished all of them? Mm -hmm. That was the last sentence of all of it? That was the last sentence. Was it amazing? <laughs> so how are you guys not crying? I, how are you not crying? Well, if you notice, there's a little, a little like I'm doing a, one of those little yeah. things right there. Wow. And you can and you can also barely hear me say at the beginning, I go, all was well, which is the last. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then and then it ends, and then she's just like, oh my God, we're done. But here's what stinks though. I want to keep doing that, and right, I don't know. It's five years now. It's yeah, so what's I don't know what the next book to transition to. Well, how about the Lord of the Rings? Okay, well, here's the thing about Lord of the Rings. There's some, cause because there's the Hobbit, uh. which is the I don't know. Did, wait a minute. You just <laughs> did. You just go like. Eh. The your, Hobbit is not the Lord of the Rings. God, your Twitter mentions are going to go into the toilet right now. <laughs> oh my God! Don't get me wrong. Oh. Don't get me wrong. There are some really uh, lovely no. things about it. There's, there's no. some really lovely things about it. There's the mentions of Gondolin. There's it, Thranduil. There's the scene with Gollum. There's you know, sort of the backstory. The Finding of the Ring. That's the scene with Gollum. I just yeah, said I know. That. Which I, but I. Okay, you know what? Don't try to school me on no, the things I'm, that I I'm like not, about okay, the I'm... Hobbits. <laughs> right here. Okay, I'm not going to step into Marvel World or Star Wars. Don't we, come into the Lord of the Rings over we here. We all saw what you did to James Franco. We all remember that brutal okay. beatdown yeah. when he quizzed you on the Silmarillion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was pretty brutal. Thanks. I'm not doing that. Okay, good. But I am saying. Skip The Hobbit? Here's the it, thing. Oh. I read The Lord of the Rings multiple times before I ever read The Hobbit. And then I read The Hobbit and I went, okay, I kind of get what they're referring to here. Uh -huh. But it just does not have, it doesn't have the high style and the language. I just don't think it's as good a book as The Lord of the Rings. But for a 10-year-old. She's ready, it? man. She's Pat right. Oswald's um. daughter. <laughs> if she was six, I would say read The Hobbit. It's okay. like six to eight, something like that. That's The Hobbit. That's fine. But she's, she's ready, man. I'm just, I'm like, because when I was her age, when I was 10, and this is due to that really benign parental neglect in the 70s. And my, my parents were great parents, but sure, sure. They, were, they were like, oh, this, this Steve, it's a killer dog, Cujo, enjoy. So I was like, <laughs> I, when I was, I swear to God, I read, I read The Stand when I was 10. I read, wow. I, exactly. How, are you, have, you, have you slept yet? Well, I mean, there's, it was a very, it's a very weird way to enter, to read before you go through puberty. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, it sure. just feels very strange, and I can't read her Cujo, where mm -hmm. the, oh, so and then the the kid died and the mom went crazy. Okay, good night. Like that, I can't. <laughs> that's not a way to finish. <laughs> like maybe I could eventually. But, and she, and by the way, she sees all the Stephen King books on my shelf, and she's like, oh, I want to read one of those. I'm like, no, you can't read those yet. No, not yet. You can't read those yet. I she, didn't know you were in favor of censoring things. Oh, God, you know, Stephen, for God. Sakes, I'm not gonna read her The Shining and read her a love scene in a haunted hotel. I'm not gonna. Ugh. I am merely <laughs> with you, Pat okay. Oswald. Okay. No, I, I got very defensive. I understand that you. I cannot wait for the people to attack me over The Hobbit. That is going to be insane. Well, I'm just saying that. I'm not sure if that's gonna make it to air. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> wow. I didn't I'm know you were sure. so into censoring things. Uh, we have to take a break. Oh. Uh, please join us. We'll be right back with more Sir Patton Oswald.